capacity, but it's not space they're running low on its staff. WRTV's Megan Sanctorum found out how healthcare leaders are coping and the important message they have for the community. Johnson Memorial Health is one of several hospitals in our area that have recently had to divert patients because they don't have the staff to care for them. I mean, the healthcare system is being strained now like never before in, in this country's history. It's something healthcare leaders never want to do and something they rarely have to. But an increase in patients and more and more employees out quarantining due to COVID-19 has prompted hospitals like Johnson Memorial, Franciscan and Community Health to at times divert emergency patients. Leaders at all three say the demand for beds and number of available workers can change hourly. Johnson Memorial Health has been trying to hire additional staff members for months. And until they find the people to fill those roles, current employees are having to do more and pick up extra shifts. It's scary to think that you don't have enough staff and you know, you call, you, you try to incentivize, but again, people can only work so much and there's only so many people out there with the potential work. He's urging people to take the virus seriously, wear a mask, social distance, and avoid large gatherings. The situation is so bad because people are making a conscious choice not to do what physicians have been telling them to do since March. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. Leaders with Johnson Memorial Health say 22 staff members at the Franklin Hospital were out due to COVID yesterday. That is the highest number they have seen since the beginning of the pandemic. A state panel has taken formal disciplinary action against an Indianapolis plumber accused of taking customers money and not doing the work. WRTV Investigates has been digging into Jonathan Kirby's business practices for more than a year. WRTV's Kara Kenny explains why the state is calling it one of the most severe penalties they've seen. WRTV first told you about Jonathan Kirby back in May 2019. Customer after customer say they paid him to do work on their home, but he either didn't do the work or only did half the job and failed to provide refunds. Morgan Gowdy found him on Nextdoor where he used the name John Michael and claimed to be licensed. He seemed honest. He really did. He was charismatic, outgoing. Morgan hired Kirby to fix a leaky pipe. And then that's when the problem started. He tried fixing that one pipe and he said it was fixed and it was working fine. But the next day we noticed that both the pipe that he had fixed before and the pipe that he had fixed the day previously, they were both leaking now. The attorney general filed this formal complaint against Kirby, alleging eight counts of fraud, deception, misconduct, and violations of Indiana law. Wednesday morning, the Indiana Plumbing Commission met virtually. Mr. Kirby seems or is not present, nor does he have representation. The commission heard evidence that Kirby defrauded at least four consumers. The state is here to protect the public from these exact type of acts that the respondent has engaged in. We presented you with evidence from four different individuals through testimony in the various exhibits who all suffered a financial loss due to respondent using his professional license to his benefit to engage in material deception. They voted unanimously to find Kirby guilty on all eight counts. They revoked his plumbing license, fined Kirby $8,000, and ordered him to pay restitution to consumers. Commission member and plumber William Sorello called it one of the worst cases he's ever seen. I would think this is probably the most severe penalty I've seen at a commission meeting, and I've been on the commission a long time. But Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. We've reached out to Kirby for a response and he told us via email that he is working to pay people back and recently paid a few of them. He can't apply for another plumbing license in Indiana for seven years. If your alarm clock went off after 8 a.m. this morning, then you missed these temperatures. The coldest air just before 8 a.m. That's when our temperature hit 19 in the metro area. I show you this morning's temperatures just to show you how much progress we've made through the day. Sunshine to the rescue. We made it into the 40s. It's still 40 in Indy. 36, though, in Peru. 41 in Lafayette. Temperatures Bloomington and Columbus in the low 40s. Another cold night tonight. Skies generally clear overnight. There's a good-looking view looking west over White River from downtown Indianapolis. The wind is calm. That's one of the pieces of the recipe for another cold night, but we should not drop into the teens. We'll stay in the 20s. 27 by 11 o'clock tonight. 
temperatures in the morning hours tomorrow. Low to mid 20s. Still, it's a cold morning tomorrow. We'll talk about the trend, which is pretty obvious through the entire seven day forecast coming up. Indianapolis Colts punter Rigoberto Sanchez said surgery went very well to remove a cancerous tumor and today coach Frank Reich echoed those sentiments. Sanchez tweeted the news after yesterday's surgery. He revealed Monday after playing in Sunday's game against the Titans that he received a cancerous diagnosis late last week, but he has not revealed the exact details. He only said doctors found it before it spread to the rest of his body. Today coach Reich began his remarks with an update on Sanchez. He's at home resting. We're very optimistic. We're very thankful for the doctors and, and for how well everything went. So we'll get him rested up, and the prognosis is very positive. Reich also said running back Jonathan Taylor has been activated from the reserve COVID-19 list and was scheduled to practice today. The Colts are on the road Sunday to take on the Texans. We had our first taste of winter like weather this week with a little snow, but more is sure to come and NDOT is hiring more snowplow drivers to be ready. There is a hiring fair tomorrow in Indianapolis. They are looking to fill 16 positions. The hiring event is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 7105 Brookville Road. Walk-ins are welcome. Seasonal positions run through March. Starting pay is $16 an hour. NDOT is also offering a $250 signing bonus and a $500 retention bonus for eligible candidates. You must have a valid CDL license. Still ahead on WRTV, putting restrictions on future projects that many consider controversial, the county taking steps to regulate renewable energy and pulling the plug on a popular winter event. Your dreams of summer fun on the water will have to come from somewhere else. And the sun is setting here on our December 2nd. The whole month's still ahead of us. Kyle Mounts will have the December outlook when we come back. An update tonight to a story we brought you yesterday on the news at five. Shelby County is moving forward with plans to regulate future solar farms. Last night, the Shelby County Plan Commission approved new regulations that would oversee the installation of solar panel projects in the county. The previous ordinance lacked details and was considered weak. Homeowners have been demanding elected leaders and county boards do more to make sure future solar projects are limited in size, operate safely, and protect prime farmland and property values. We spoke to homeowners following the vote from the plan commission. Uh, they did not bring up our wells, well testing. They did not, uh, they don't want to, they don't want to touch on property values. But am I disappointed in this? Yes, I am. I do feel like the people weren't heard. Some, some ways we had baby steps, some ways we had no steps. So, you know, we'll take the gains that we got and be happy about those and, and pray for better outcomes in the future. So Zonda, of course, the, the county commissioners take this up on Monday. You folks plan to be present. So what's next? Do you give up? Absolutely not. One of the things that I could tell anybody that wants to um, see a change in any law is to be persistent and to be um, a steady force. Um, be respectful, but to always be there. Well, the decision from the plan commission now goes to the Shelby County commissioners. The commissioners can approve the recommendations, vote them down, or send them back to the plan commission to make changes. Commissioners may take up the issue as early as Monday. For the first time in its history, the Indianapolis Boat Sport and Travel Show is canceled. The production company that puts it on said in a Facebook post that due to the restrictions imposed by the state due to the coronavirus, they would not be able to host the type of event they normally do. It was scheduled for February 18th through the 27th at the state fairgrounds. Also canceled are the Indiana Motorcycle and Power Sports Expo and the Indiana Deer, Turkey and Waterfowl Expo. All are scheduled to return in 2022. And while we think about the time when we can get out on the water again, we still haven't even hit winter yet. The official start of winter is still nearly three weeks away, but we're already feeling that chill. Meteorologist Kyle Mounts joins us now. And Kyle, is this trend going to continue through the end of the year? Yeah, Amanda, you know, we started off yesterday with temperatures below average. Didn't get out of the 30s there. Today, though, a little better. We made it into the 40s and might be a sign that we're going to get back above average. The outlook for the month of December here from the Climate Prediction Center actually forecasting overall trends of above average temperatures across the entire state. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean a heat wave or anything like that, 
but we will take it as we continue to get a little closer to that colder time of year. Our average high falls from the middle 40s at the first of the month. By the time we're getting ready to ring in the new year, we've got an average high of just 36 and those lows close to the teens for an average low temperature. As far as precipitation goes, also calling for below average on the precipitation front here, and we do average about seven inches of snowfall in the month of December. Now, don't let that combination dash your dreams of a white Christmas, though. At this point right now, we'll put that meter at about a 30% chance of seeing a white Christmas there with about an inch of snow on the ground. It just takes one here toward the end of the month, but 30% is about the standard here for a year in in central Indiana. Of course, we'll be watching that, but Kevin Gregory joins us now and he's got his eye on the next seven days and any rain chances and that beautiful sunset that continues, Kevin. Yeah, I can't stop staring at this, Kyle. As you look to the west, just a few clouds there, but if you're an artist and you could do an oil painting of this, I think it would be pretty good looking, wouldn't it? 521 is when the sun officially sets. That'll be dropping below the horizon uh, as we speak here. Our conversation includes another cold night tonight. Let me show you the high pressure. That's why we have clear skies, the calm winds. Notice back to the southwest, southwest Missouri, down into Arkansas and Louisiana. There's rain there snow on the back side of this but we'll kind of stiff arm that weather system and right now forecast models keeping that south of the Ohio River keeping us dry in central Indiana really most of the seven-day forecast temperatures around the region upper 30s from Tipton on to Kokomo and Greentown as well as Peru and Grissom Air Reserve Base up there temperatures in east central Indiana Connorsville Liberty and Richmond in the 30s as warm as 45, though, in Sullivan, uh, south of Terre Haute. Tonight, a clear sky. Temperatures will still be cold, just not as cold as we were during the morning hours this morning, which happened to be the coldest temperature since last February. As you look at the trend here, 44 is your average high. Temperatures over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, a little colder will slowly start to rebound as we go into the middle of next week, but uh, the start to early next week will still be on the cool side. Tomorrow, a few more clouds around than we're used to, especially in the southern half of the state. Temperature nudges its way to about 45 for the high, wind generally around 10 miles per hour. There's your cloud cover, all the gray. It could be a sprinkle in the southern half of the state, but we're really not expecting much. There's the wind direction. That's the key toward bringing temperatures up just a little bit. We had a nice temperature range today from 19 all the way into the low 40s. The air is dry, so these weather systems that try to come our way just don't have a lot of moisture to work with. There are the temperatures from the low 40s to mid 40s, maybe even 47 in Terre Haute during the day Thursday. Friday, mixture of clouds and sunshine, temperature of about 46 for the high in Indianapolis, maybe a couple degrees warmer than that in the southern portion of the state. There's your weekend forecast hovering right around 40 degrees. The overnight lows over the weekend will be in the upper 20s. Seven day forecast put together and the theme is pretty obvious, dry, relatively quiet forecast. No blasts of cold air, no big storm systems and the temperatures about average for this time of year. Well, Toy Drive is underway. You're well aware of that, and thank you for helping us over the last two decades. The Toy Drive helps children throughout central Indiana, and the reach is expanding into Henry County through Westminster Center. Westminster Community Center has been around since 1956, and we have served all of Henry County. The food pantry and clothing room are the two major stays of Westminster because we feel it's important to provide those necessities for families. We have a website that families can go to, but they can also call us and get directed to our facility where we can share with them the different services that we provide and then uh, they come on a regular basis. I think that the COVID has created opportunities where people have been laid off and so they don't have that little extra money that they had before that they could take care of the needs of their children. So I'm just suspecting that there will be f a few more families that come our direction because of that. It's amazing to see the faces of children who receive toys. For many of us, it may be a normal kind of thing to look under the Christmas tree and find toys for their children, but many of the people that we serve uh, don't have that luxury. 
In fact, many of them may not even have a Christmas tree. So it's really important for us to be able to reach out and help those families to have that joy of Christmas and to be able to see the faces of, of children who are happy because they too have been included in the Christmas giving. It's so important for persons like those who are listening to be able to give generously to the toy drive so that we can reach out and really minister to those who are in need in all of Henry County. Just three days from now, this Saturday, we'll be collecting at four area Simon Malls. You can visit us at the Fashion Mall, Castleton Square, Hamilton Town Center, and the Greenwood Park Mall. We're also accepting at U-Store locations. For all the information you need, just go to wrtv.com slash toy drive and thank you. It is that easy. Thanks, Kevin. It's been such a challenging year that People Magazine could not name just one person of the year. How many will share that honor coming up? Well, we all know it's been quite a year, and today People Magazine announced it would not name one person of the year, but rather four. George Clooney, Dr. Anthony Fauci, Selena Gomez, and Regina King are the 2020 People of the Year. They will be featured in a year-end double issue with four separate covers. They will be celebrated for their positive impact during this challenging year. Clooney is lauded for his advocacy work, Fauci in the fight against COVID-19, Gomez for aiding mental health initiatives, and King for her support of marginalized communities. The magazine will be out on Friday. Meeting COVID-19 does not necessarily mean you're all in the clear. Tonight we check back in with a COVID survivor the side effects he is now facing after recovering from the virus. That's all new at 6 p.m. And two local doctors who not only have medical expertise, but negotiating financial skills to help Hoosiers get out of debt. You could take advantage of their help next at 530.